So, man, I've been working on this um, code for my live chat feature for like two days. And the story goes, I was just about to launch my product, my app. And then I find out that when I go to my chat and I log out, it would give me this error. And you might have seen it before, you might have seen channels. So if you go to, and this whole thing is, is working for um, Redux Sega Firebase, so this is what the tutorial is. But I'm using Firestore, and uh, I was using channels. So my experience with channels was that it's great in that every new update you get to your collection, it'll update on the fly, which is amazing. But my thing is, it didn't clean up after itself. So when I logged out, uh, what happened was I was getting this on snapshot error. And that is because um, when I logged out, the token that I was using, I had to invalidate it. It's like a cookie. Um, so I was using async storage and I, the token that I was using, when I log in, I set that token, but when I log out, I also have to unset, I have to get rid of it. And when you get rid of that token, then that means you're not allowed to access this fire this this firebase user's data anymore so at that point it broke the broke the channel and it broke it in terms of it was giving me that on snapshot error because it was trying to get data from the channel but you, but with uh with a token that you've already unset so it lost the permission so which was which is what it basically boils down to it's a it's a permission error. you as the user you're not allowed to see this data so to give you an example we go to conversations and i click log out okay i click okay so this is the error that i'm talking about uh uncaught error on snap in snapshot permission denied that means that okay you're logged in before and you had a token and you're using that token to get the data back and now you've unset that token so we're gonna throw you an error because you're not allowed to see this so that's basically what it means and you're not you're not allowed to see this data so let me just undo the take latest um but I was using take every before and you could go to the site and see go to Redux to get it to see what the, what the difference is between take every and take latest but essentially take latest starts a sega whenever an action is dispatched uh, so we could use it to start sync, sync sega whenever login is dispatched so basically whatever thread that you were on last even if it hasn't finished yet apparently it destroys that and just goes on and starts a new thread um so that's what take latest is um if you don't know about threads and, and threads then don't worry about it um because i didn't know about it until like five years later at, after after my university days so they talked a lot about threads in university but for me in university i was like what the hell are you talking about that was me basically the entire throughout my entire comp sci course in university i don't even know how i made it out here, out of here and i don't know how i got my job but uh that's that's basically it. Um, you've learned you learn most about programming and stuff and threads and all this stuff on the job so if you keep at it like I did then you'll be fine a um, little motivational speak so where was I uh, let's go back here oh, man this uh, allergies in spring it's really bad but let's see so I'm doing RSF Firestore sync collection which is exactly what they do here they do they're using database instead and then you pass in this um this query snapshot uh well, well, well what, what do they pass in there i forget so sync collection what you pass in is either a string to your to to your to the route of your collection or a firebase firestore collection reference or a firebase firestore query already had these because I, I was making channels before so if you look at um this code here i have in two parts this is what i was talking about so if you do something like const channel 
rsffirestore.channel and then you do the collection reference and while it's true um, that means you keep it on the loop while it's true then you take this channel and and it opens like a web socket so when that's the best way I can describe it and when 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 something in that channel change when something in your collection changes then changes then it'll it'll send back a notification of that so it's always checking and does does a message doc changes to get the newest change and then you basically take that change manipulate the data a bit which is what I'm doing here and then I put that data into redux so Using this code, it screwed me up a lot. Um, prevent me, pre prevented me from launching actually when I because because when I logged out, I erased all my tokens uh, for, to identify this user. And when I pass in that token into this function, well, we don't have a token anymore, so it gives me that permission area that that I showed you earlier. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm doing RSF Firestore collection, and I'm using the collection reference here. Um, I'm doing a success action creator, and this is what was defined in my actions. Um, let's see if I can show you that actually. So let's go back here. Messages actions. So that's exactly how my actions look like. It's basically a create message. Um, so yeah, you. For, that's my success action creator. I reference the action creator where I'm actually creating a message that is taking the data that I got and throwing it into Redux. Um, failure action creator, I don't know if it's really needed, but then I was getting error messages that it wasn't there, so I had to put something in. So I just put this create message failed, which just shows an error. Um, but anyways, what's most important is doing this payload transform. Um, because this is actually really needed. If you, if, you, if you don't use it, then you're gonna get back a bunch of data. Well, you're gonna get back a bunch of data regardless, but it's gonna be unmanageable for you. So for me, what this message transformer does is it literally goes here, takes that huge blob that Firebase sends back to you, and you have to massage it. So basically, um, the blob that Firebase sends back to you, as it was for me, is a query snapshot. So you could just consider it as a query snapshot, which is one thing that was lacking in the documentation that made me have to trial and error for like five hours. And I was like, can't someone just tell me what I'm getting back? Um, so that was the that was the issue. I was getting back a query snapshot. If you do this call, then you're then you'll get basically the same thing because I literally just copy and pasted, pasted this code over here and changed the variable to payload instead of query snapshot. And then I looped through it and then I did the, and then I'm looking for the message. So I'm just, look, I'm just getting the data of, of every, every, every object in the, in the array, in the query snapshot that I get back. And then I just added my own little variables that I wanted to add, like the message ID to create it at. And all this was just to push, push that data, push this data that I get back from doing message.data into this uh, messages array that I created prior. And then I would pretty much just sort the array because this is an array of messages. I'm really only using Fire, Firestore for messaging, live chat. So I had to, I had to sort the time for um I found that I don't it's, I've done this so long ago but I found that my messages weren't coming back in a way that was entirely entirely sorted so I had to sort sort my messages by the created at time and I popped the last message out and that will give me the last message which I'm console logging here and my last message looks something like that so you know it's very simple um and then i return that last message and once i get that last message back what the sync collection will do is it'll take that message uh, so before what transform does it just takes that message that we that we got back that we transformed and it passes on to success action creator 
and then it's basically normal normal uh, action creator and reducer type stuff that you do with Redux. But I think it's been a long video and I hope you got something out of it. Um, literally this bugged me for like five to eight hours and it was a really p big pain in the ass. But the most important message I wanted to leave you guys with if you're doing the sync, sync, uh, sync collection stuff for real time updates is that your success action creator goes to an action creator in your actions in Redux. So example, mine is that. Um, your failure action creator, I don't know if it's actually needed, but it, it told me that I needed it or else I just get a red screen of death and then it complained. So then I just added that there. And you really need to transform. You really need to transform your data or else you'll just get a big blob of data that is really no use. So I suggest what I did is of course loop through the, the data that you get and do messages.data because that is likely the data that you're interested in anyways. And then do whatever you want with it and then return the data. Um, I'm returning just this the last piece of data because I, I've, I've, I'm working with prior code and I just wanted to keep the same architecture. But the thing is with sync, collect, sync collection actually, which is different from channels, is that, um, let's go back. For sync collection, you get back the whole collection, which is different from channels. Channels, you get back like the latest change. But with sync collection, you get back everything. So if I had like a hundred messages in my in, in, in my conversation, it would get back all a hundred messages. Each time something changes, it will get back all a hundred messages. Whereas for channels, if I had a hundred messages and something changes, it just gets back that latest change, which is the difference between the two I found. Um, so that is why over here, I'm actually just returning the last message because that's the only message that I care about that I want to add onto my onto my Redux store. So that's one caveat that I wanted to men mention out before uh, we end this video. Uh, but anyways, that's that was a quick recap on on sync collection and how to use it properly. And do recognize that the only reason is that when when whenever we do a take log out, that means whenever you whenever I log out, then I'm canceling this thread. I'm destroying the thread because doing a fork, we just created another process and this is just cleanup. And that is what I mean by wiping your ass before you leave the toilet. Um, so that's basically it. I hope you guys, I hope this actually helped a lot. Um, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. For Twitter and LinkedIn, it's Don Lee, Donald Lee 50 and for Instagram, it's Don Lee 50 um, I'm also writing me, uh, Medium posts with the same kind of topic. If you're interested and you want to see code that you can copy and paste, check it out there. It's also Donnelly50. I'll link all of those profiles on my on the description below so that you guys can can get to it. Uh, anyways, I hope this guy's help, helped you with uh, Redux Sega Firebase and Sync Collections, and I'll see you guys again next time. Have a great day.